Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paulo Antonio Martins Jr. Uh, I'm from Brazil, and I'm glad to be here uh, with all of you today. Uh, my talk is entitled Carbon Nanotubes and Graphene Oxide are Promising Candidates for Bone Tissue Engineering Applications. Well, um, first of all, uh, let me uh, introduce myself um, saying about my academic trajectory. Um, I was graduated in the industry at the Federal University of Vales do Jequitinhonha e Mucuri in Brazil. Uh, in it, and at this same university, I did my master in dentistry in 2011. Uh, then I came to the Federal University of Minas Gerais in 2015, uh, where I completed my PhD in cell biology. Uh, after all, in 2016, I did my postdoc in dentistry at the same university. And since uh, 2017, I am an adjunct professor at the Faculty of Dentistry of the Federal University of Minas Gerais. And in the next year, I'll go to Switzerland um, as a visiting professor at the Institute of Bioengineering at the EPFL. Uh, I'll be uh, one year in, in this university. So uh, before this, talking about the, the carbon nanotubes and graphene oxide, um, I have to, to, to say uh, a little about the tissue engineering, bony tissue engineering. In a simplistic way, uh, uh, to achieve uh, a bone uh, tissue engineering or tissue repair, regeneration, we need three elements, uh, cells, scaffolds, and cell beacons. Uh, in where carbon nanotubes and graphene oxide fit in, in scaff as a scaffolds. So I'll talk about them uh, as scaffolds, showing some results of our uh, research uh, during the, the past 10 years, uh, demonstrating how carbon nanotubes and graphene oxide work, can work as, as a scaffolds. Um, to bone tissue engineering applications, okay? So uh, carbon nanotubes are well-ordered hollow nanostructures uh, consisted basically of carbon nanotubes bonded to each other uh, via sp2 bonds, which are stronger than sp and sp3 bonds. So uh, these are a very tough uh, bonds. These are covalent bonds. So uh, the carbon nanotubes can be visualized as a, a rolled up graphene sheet with a relatively large length to diameter ratio aspect. So one such sheet will constitute a single walled carbon nanotubes, uh, which has diameters ranging from 0.5 to 1.5 nanometers. Um, when we have more than one uh, such sheet rolled up, we have multi wallet carbon nanotubes. Uh, and the distance between two sheets is approximately 0 0.3 nanometers. And depending on the number of walls, uh, the multi wallet carbon, carbon nanotubes can have uh, more than uh, 100 nanometer of diameter, okay? It's due to its multi-layered uh, structure. Well, uh, these nanotubes have um, great properties. Uh, I'll define some of these properties for now. Uh, they are, uh, they, they have an excellent, mechanical properties, uh, such as high tensile strength uh, and excellent flexibility. And this come from the, the bonds between the carbon atoms. Uh, also, in addition to, to their metallic character, they have a higher thermal and electrical conductivity. conductivity. 
So they can be used in many, many apl different applications. Yeah. Also, one of the, the, the great properties of carbon nanotubes is that they exhibit the highest youngest modulus and tensile strength among no materials. But the absence of dining bones, since we have only carbon and carbon uh, uh, atoms in, in the, the nanotubes, it uh, confers uh, chemical inertness for their use in biological applications. So uh, the functionalization, uh, which is uh, a way to, to a, a chemical um, way to associate the carbon nanotubes with different molecules, uh, allowed this, um, this problem or this uh, limitation to be circumvented. So nanotubes have an easy functionalization capability. So we can, uh, th there are different ways to, to functionalize it, carbon nanotubes. But in general, it always involves the selective breaking of these bonds between carbon atoms, uh, resulting in carboxyl groups. So we can bind in it uh, to several molecules. For example, the hyaluronic acid. Uh, that is a polysaccharide that we have used uh, along the years in our research. So the functionalization process can improve the solubility, the processability, biocompatibility, and the combination with other types of materials. Well, uh, talking ab about the, the graphene in graphene oxide, the graphene is a flat monolayer of hybridized uh, carbon atoms with SP2 bonds as well as carbon nanotubes forming a honeycomb lattice, uh, two dimensional nano structure. So uh, the graphene is a, is, a, is a flat sheet, okay? Um, the graphene oxide uh, though is obtained uh, by the chemical exfoliation of graphene. It has also a two dimensional nano structure uh, constructed in a crystalline, which gives it transparency, hexagonal, and single layered non uh, structure by oxygen groups over its surface. Uh, and these oxygen groups is, are very important because uh, they allow. Uh, binding with other molecules as well. So uh, these materials have also great properties. So the graphene uh, main properties are biocompatibility, high thermal and electrical conductivity, uh, transparency, a large surface area, and it's very important when we are uh, thinking about uh, bone tissue applications because uh, osteoblast cells need to adhere and spread, pro proliferate, and good tribological characteristics. Uh, the graphene oxide has also uh, wet ability, uh, high adhesion ability, good biocompatibility, large surface area as well, and better capacity of interaction with materials when talking about car uh, graphene oxide. Uh, however, uh, graphene oxide has a lower uh, thermal and electrical conductivity when compared to graphene. So uh, when, when we, we think about uh, bony tissue engineering applications, uh, we see that carbon nanotubes and graphene can both act as a scaffolds because um, osteoblast cells need a, a scaffold to adhere to spread and proliferate. And also uh, they need this, this kind of scaffold or matrix to uh, segregate uh, bony matrix and mineralize, and mineralize this matrix, okay? So uh, I will show you some of the publications of our group and all of them uh, related to use of carbon nanotubes or graphene oxide uh, associated with hyaluronic acid uh, to enhance bone repair or regeneration. So uh, one of our first studies 
uh, is this study publishing in 2010 in life sciences, uh, where our group used single walled carbon nanotubes in a model of two sockets of uh, rats. So we extracted the first molars uh, of these rats and we treated these sockets with uh, a combination uh, of carbon nanotubes functionalized, functionalized with hyaluronic acid. Uh, here in, in the, this figure one, we can see a, a transmission electron mic micrographs of uh, the, the, the all the carbon nanotubes uh, showing uh, uh, in the, the figure B, uh, the opening of one single carbon nanotube. In figure two, we can see in this figure is very important because we see the, the FTIR uh, spectra of the materials and we can see that uh, the functionalization of CMT carbon nanotubes with hyaluronic acid formed a third material that, it, that are different from the uh, carboxylized carbon nanotube and the uh, hyaluronic acid. So it, there is, is, is a third material different from the, 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 the two previous one. And, and we, uh, when we assess the histological and morphometric analysis, uh, we can clearly see that after seven days of proof extraction, uh, the, the animals who, uh, which received uh, this material had enhanced his, uh, the, their bone healing. We can see here in the figure three uh, in the, the legend G. I don't know if we, um, okay, okay in, the, in the last image. Uh, when we compare this, this last image with the first image, we can see the great difference in, in born, uh, newly, newly born format here. And in the, the graph up, up below, the figure four, we can see that uh, the, 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 this material enhanced significantly the bone repair. Also in this study, we, we showed that uh, this material also enhanced the expression of collagen type one and collagen type three. Uh, in the sequence in, in 2013, uh, our group conducted, I studied with uh, diabetic rats because we know that diabetes has a, a, a great negative implication in bone tissue repair. So in this study, uh, our group demonstrated that uh, the application of uh, single walled carbon nanotubes function functionalized with hyaluronic acid were capable of uh, almost eliminating the treatment effects of diabetes on bone repair because the, 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 the percentage of bone trabecule after 14 days uh, after surgery was almost uh, similar. Uh, between the diabetic rats treated with carbon nanotubes functionalized with hyaluronic acid compared to the normal control rats without diabetes. Um, the next year, we published another uh, paper uh, showing the effects of these materials in cardiac, cardiac function of uh, Wister rats. And here we can see that the uh, values of blood pressure, systolic tension, plus DTDT, and coronal flow, as well as heart rate, uh, was similar in control animals and those animals uh, which received the single water carbon nanotubes and functionalized with hyaluronic acid. So we concluded here that low publication of uh, these materials in tooth sockets of rats did not uh, alter uh, the cardiac function of uh, with the rats. So uh, it's an, uh, uh, an evidence that these materials are not um, toxic to cardiac, um, uh, to heart and, and, and circulation, okay? Uh, 
After in 2016, we conduct a in vitro study to, 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 to investigate how uh, these materials um, could influence the viability of uh, osteoblast cells. And we can see here in this study that uh, this, the materials did not alter the, the, the cell viability. Uh, and when uh, we can see this in the figure nine, uh, we, which uh, shows a, a double stain with hot and propidium iodide. Uh, we can, so we, we can see that almost no deaths of cells were noted. And in figure 10, we analyze it by von Kohl's staining um, how these cells, um, the, or these osteoblast cells in the presence of the, the, these materials could uh, deposit mineralized uh, bone. So we can see here uh, in the histological and morphometric analysis by mineralized high area percentage, of course, uh, that uh, cells um, treated with these materials uh, deposited significantly more uh, mineralized bone nodule uh, than control cells that did not receive the, the carbon nanotubes. So it's another evidence that these materials can uh, have an osteogenic capacity. Uh, in the same year, we conducted another study to investigate the, the application of multi-walled car carbon nanotubes um, during the initial inflammation phase okay, uh, of bone repair regeneration also in a tooth sockets model. Uh, we evaluated uh, the, the, the repair in the cells and the inflammation process during one, three, and seven days after tooth extraction and injection of these materials. Uh, we seen uh, in this three day period that uh, it did not have, have an influence and significant influence in the inflammatory process. So uh, the mechanisms that are related to bone repair uh, acceleration are not related to this initial phase. Um, what we noted was that hyaluronic acid enhanced the number of blood uh, vessels in the, uh, in the, the tooth socks of Rats. Also, when we evaluated the myeloperoxidase, uh, an enzyme that is uh, so as a way to indirectly quantify uh, neutrophils, uh, it has also no difference between groups uh, during the three day period. So, this furnishes us and, uh, another evidence that these materials are not uh, toxic to, to, to cells in the concentration that we uh, work, uh, 100 micrograms per milliliter, and they can improve bone repair regeneration using another mechanism that I will explore uh, in the next slides. Uh, here, uh, we conducted another study uh, using also multi-wallet carbon nanotubes, but uh, functionalized with collagen type, type one collagen and uh, mineral trioxide aggregate uh, or, or MTA. We defined the bare concentration of this uh, material, okay? Uh, and we can see here in the figure 14 and a skeleton, a scanning electron microscopy of pre blast cells uh, grown on different biocomposites. And we can see here that uh, these cells uh, adhere better, uh, proliferated better, and produced uh, bone matrix in, 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 a, in a great amount uh, in the, the collagen, MTA, and multi-wallet carbon nanotubes. In figure 16, we can see a mineralization assay uh, assessed with alizarin red staining uh, 
showing also that these cells in the presence of the carbon nanotubes were able to produce more uh, mineralized, mineralized bone, uh, bone modules. Uh, so confirming that they can uh, produce this oxygenic capacity. In the figure th 15, we see the, that the cells uh, can phagocyte nanotubes to, to, to this cytoplasm. Uh, in 2017, we work with a different model that is a bone defect created in the, the tibia of rats. And we are also working with multi-wallet carbon nanotubes. We can see that these materials in this new type of bone defect in, in more experimental model also enhanced bone repair regeneration, also uh, enhancing the expression of G, V, E, G, F, the osteocalcin B, A, E, B, M, B, M, P2, uh, assessed by immunohistochemistry. Uh, recently, we conducted another experiment with single old and multi old carbon nanotubes to investigate the effects of sterilization uh, in this material. So in the figure 21, we can see an skeletron, uh, scanning electron micrograph showing that um, sterilization uh, has no detriment effects in the, in the surface of these materials. And we also investigated the effects in kidney. So uh, we did not see any detriment effects of these materials in the, in the ki kidney, kidney of uh, rats. Uh, and you can see in the table two and three that the parameters of um, this organ was not uh, compromised uh, by carbon nanotubes functionalized uh, or not with hyaluronic acids. And recently, uh, in studying uh, graphene oxide also functionalized with hyaluronic acid, we uh, show it that uh, this combination also formed uh, a third material different from the two uh, isolated ones. We can see this in the figures 23 and 24. We conducted an in vitro study with osteoblast cells and we see that uh, lower concentrations did not affect cell viability, but as we increase uh, the concentration, to extreme uh, uh, high concentration, we see that it diminishes cell viability because uh, there are too much materials um, in contact with cells. And we uh, assessed also using a, a bone defect model in TB of rats that these materials also uh, could enhance uh, bone uh, repair regeneration after seven days of surgical procedures. Um, we cannot compare directly uh, graphene oxide and, and carbon nanotubes, but indirect comparisons sh uh, have shown that this uh, material, this graphene oxide, uh, promoted uh, greater uh, bone repair regeneration when compared to carbon nanotubes. So uh, this is a recent result, and we are now investigation, investigating better this uh, result and conducting another series of studies to, to understand better these uh, aspects. So um, I'm reaching the, the, the final of my talk. Uh, I have one minute to hear. So I would like to, to leave a, a take home message. Um, carbon nanotubes and graphene oxide have show great osteogenic capacity as show, shown by our, our results. Uh, they act as a scaffold to osteoblast cells. Uh, allowing them to adhere, spread, and proliferate. Besides function like collagen fibers, uh, because the size of uh, carbon nanotubes are close to the, the, the collagen fibers during the position of bony matrix. And they also uh, help to control events of crystal nucleation and growth of the inorganic component. But we have to, to say that the results achieved in animal models do not guarantee the success in humans. So it's still necessary to assure the safety of these materials before applying it in humans. 
And, and we, when we thought about this, uh, we, we see that there is still a long way to go until there are clinical use in humans. And we are conducting several investigations um, to allow the, the application in, in, in humans in the near future. But we see that uh, there are very uh, many answers, ma many questions to be answered. So thank you very much for your time, for your attention. And I'm open for questions um, for the audience.